hello and welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, uh, maybe in this or in the next lecture, we will uh, cover the uh, topic on this regression analysis. There are uh, different types of uh, uh, regression analysis is uh, there, say first we will start with that uh, simple linear regression and after that there are different types say uh, multiple uh, regressions are there and then nonlinear regressions are there. So, we will see and uh, basic uh, uh, fundamental things, uh, basic concept we will un understand. Uh, basically, when uh, in uh, in many application field, obviously including civil engineering, there are uh, many random variables are there which are uh, supposed to have some uh, relationship uh, to there. And in this, uh, through this uh, analysis, we try to uh, capture that. We try to model that uh, relationship. Now, if the relationship is linear. Uh, then we generally go for this linear regression and sometimes we have seen that maybe the linear uh, relationship is not sufficient. So, there we have to go to the nonlinear uh, regression uh, analysis. Sometimes uh, the target variable uh, is dependent only on one, uh, uh, one variable or sometimes that uh, response variable or the target variable can depend on more than one. Uh, um, dependent variable. So, in that case we generally go for this multiple regression. So, all these things we will learn uh, in this lecture or this may continue to the next lecture also. Uh, and uh, so, this our today's lecture title is regression analysis and uh, correlation and this correlation means here that we have already uh, discussed earlier that uh, this uh, correlation when we discuss this random variable and also here also we will see that how uh, so uh, this regression analysis in this regression analysis correlation is an important part. So, we will just see in the light of this regression analysis also towards the end of this uh, of this uh, lecture. So, our outline of this uh, um, today's lecture is that first we will go through some introduction and then we will discuss about some uh, the different types of regression. Then a formulation of this regression in this there are uh, linear regression as I uh, mentioned. And in this linear regression also it may have the constant variance or uh, it may have the non-constant uh, variance. So, this non-constant may be uh, the variable variance may be the other word, but uh, just to avoid two uh, similar words. So, it is used as this non-constant uh, variance. So, this non-constant variance and this constant variance means in general for the linear regression when we refer to, we refer to this constant variance means over the entire range of the dependent variable, the variance of the response variable uh, remains same. That is what is the, uh, I can say that by default case, but sometimes or uh, it can be uh, observed that this variance may also vary. Uh, over the uh, different uh, range of that dependent variable. So, in that case we have to go for this non-constant uh, variance also. And uh, then if there are more than uh, one uh, dependent variable, then we have to go for this multiple linear regression. And uh, if the relationship we see that may not be linear, sometimes some other nonlinear relationship may have uh, better, can better explain the uh, target variable, then we can go for this nonlinear regression. And then as I told that there is, so we will see that correlation basically this will be a measure that how strong the relationship has been captured through that model that we have developed through this regression. So, that we will see. Well, so in this regression analysis the fundamental that sorry the functional relationship between two or more variables is of great interest as I mentioned that there may be many. Uh, um, variables which are uh, which we can see that uh, uh, there could be a uh, could be a relationship either linear or uh, uh, nonlinear and this kind of relationship basically if you just take the observed data and plot it through some uh, scatter diagram and then uh, itself uh, by visual inspection itself we can see that there are uh, oh, whether there are some types of uh, relationship is there or not so if we can see uh, uh, then we can uh, we can think of uh, this type of um, regression analysis to capture that uh, that particular uh, relationship. So here, uh, if, so, but if the both the variables are random, unique relationship cannot be established. So you know that uh, that unique relationship here, what is meant that it may not be that one to one relationship, 
there could be some even uh, there could be some randomness in both the variables. So, if one variable is fixed and that is known uh, that is termed as a control variable or that what I mentioned is that uh, is a dependent uh, is the dependent uh, variable the range of possible values of the other can be obtained through this uh, an, an analysis for this a probabilistic description is required to describe this relationship and basically this is what is the uh, you will get through this regression analysis so in this uh, so the type of question particularly if i uh, concentrate to this different uh, field of application in civil engineering then this type of analysis will give me the answers to a, a kind of this type of questions say that how does the strength of material depend on the temperature so if the temperature i vary so how the strength of material whether it will increase or decrease or how the relationship is Secondly, say that uh, how does the compressive strength of the concrete depend on the water cement uh, ratio. So, if I increase the water cement ratio, then what will happen to the compress, uh, compressive strength or if I decrease it, what will happen. So, uh, so these are some two variables are considered. Similarly, what we can say that whether that target variable here is the compressive strength may have instead of this only that water cement ratio, there could have been other factors as well that can uh, that can be influencing to this. So, there what will happen so that one target variable and more than one uh, dependent variable so that multiple uh, regression uh, uh, can come into the picture. Uh, third say that how strong the link between the rainfall runoff uh, for a given catchment or uh, for a given area. So, um, how so rainfall and runoff if the rainfall is more runoff can be more. So, how, how strong is that relationship? So, this type of uh, answer uh, we can get uh, through uh, this, uh, this regression analysis. Uh, the probabilistic uh, relationship between the variable is described in terms of the mean and variance of one random variable as a function of the value of the other. Uh, we have what is known as the, uh, the regression uh, analysis. So, say for example, as I was telling just by if I just plot that uh, uh, through a scatter plot the what is the observed data that we are having the paired observed data the paired in the sense here that we are talking about the two uh, variables first. So, this is one variable is x and other one is the y. So, now if I just plot it uh, this uh, blue circles you can see that this is the uh, paired data. And so, we can see that that if x increases y can uh, y is also increasing and vice versa if uh, x is decreasing y is decreasing. So, whether now uh, uh, can we just estimate one, one relationship between this x and y. Uh, so, uh, that that estimate that estimate of this functional relationship uh, is, is your that uh, regression analysis that we will get uh, through this analysis. So, first we will take that uh, linear uh, regression for example, that the, uh, the diagram that is shown here we can see and we can expect that there could be a linear, uh, linear relationship can uh, can have it here. So, but in many other cases where if is looking at this scatter uh, plot we can see that initially it may be increasing and later on it may not increase in that rate. So, there could be we can expect that there might be a, a, a non-linear uh, relationship can happen. So, the first to what we are taking up is that uh, linear regression. So, where the expectation that the relationship is linear uh, between the uh, dependent variables and the target variable. So, the uh, linear regression attempts to model the relationship between two var variables by fitting a linear equation to the observed data. One variable is considered to be an explanatory variable and other is considered to be a uh, dependent variable. So, uh, that uh, what uh, so our target so in this uh, example that we have seen what we can use is that this variable x we can use as to be that your dependent variable and this is the y is my target variable. So, I can use the information of x and I can model this y. It can be it can be opposite also if we can if, if we uh, estimate a x with respect to the variable y. So, then we generally say that uh, that x is regressed on y and uh, in other way the y is regressed on x. 
uh, for example, that one might be interested to relate the dissolved oxygen and the temperature of a pool. So, uh, whether the dissolved oxygen and temperature, these two data is generally first collected and then we can see that whether the their relationship, how the relationship, how they vary with respect to e each other, whether the uh, whether in the sense that um, uh, I can I can see it in the both sides, whether the DO uh, given the temperature or uh, the temperature given what is the DO. But sometimes in case of this uh, the practical consideration, uh, uh, maybe we are interested to know that our what is our target, what is the uh, uh, what should be the uh, dependent variable and what should be the uh, target variable. For example, the e example that is given here the dissolved oxygen and the temperature generally what we see is that temperature we use as a dependent variable and this dissolved oxygen is the target variable. So, this depends on the in what area in what practical field that we are uh, um, that we are applying uh, this uh, uh, this analysis. The basic formulation of uh, linear regression. Uh, um, regression with the constant variance first. So, here as I was telling at the starting that when we are um, taking that the constant the variance of the dependent variable uh, over the entire range of the dependent variable it remains constant. So, in that case uh, we generally say that this regression with the constant variance and uh, by default when we say that regression analysis we generally mention that it is with the constant variance. So, the non-constant case is, is a special case that we will take that we will see uh, after some time. So, in case of this uh, regression with constant variance uh, let us consider a pair of data x, y plotted on the scatter diagram as uh, just a uh, few slides before you have seen. Uh, from the fi figure it can be noted that the possible values of the variable y depends on the other variable x. So, to analyze the data for y uh, calculating variance and mean we take into consideration the change in x and also we can see that there is a general tendency of the values of y to increase with the x. So, these are some of this example is given with respect to that uh, plot the scatter plot that we have seen uh, few slides before. So, here again uh, the, uh, um, the similar plot has been shown, uh, shown here. So, here that one uh, one variable is x and other one is the y. So, here uh, we are taking the case that we will uh, we'll regress y on x. So, x is our are uh, dependent variable and y is our target variable. So, here you can see that when x increases y also increases and vice versa. So, we have to uh, fit a linear relationship between this x and y. So, hence the mean value of the mean, va mean values of y also increases with the value of the x. So, as x in increases that mean value or the in the statistical sense the expected value of the y also in, in increases. So, the the relationship let the relationship be linear because uh, we are discussing this and the linear regression now. So, the expected value of the y given x a particular value x. So, you know so this is the conditional expectation. So, if I just take what is the expectation of the y you know the expectation of the y means without any other information. So, whatever the y we see that it can uh, from this diagram we can see that it varies from the from 0 to 0.1 say. So, whatever the uh, values the range that we see we will just take its mean and that is the expected value of the o of y. Now, this when you are fitting this relationship that means it is the condition on the given value of this x. Now, if I give some value of this x at 6, so in this in this part what is the expected value of this y. So, this is now become the condition and this conditional mean is 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 uh, expressed through this linear relationship which is alpha plus beta x plus epsilon. So, this is you know this is the uh, equation of that of the straight line plus some error term should be there to express that what is that uh, value of that that the mean value of this y. Now, this alpha and beta are the constant and epsilon is the positive error of this uh, the sorry possible error of me measurement. So, uh, if when we take that data uh, uh, observe the data. So, there could be some in that measurement itself there could be some error. So, that error is expressed through this epsilon. Variance of y may be independent 
or a function of x this is known as the linear re regression of y on x that is what I was, uh, was telling. So, it is y on x it can be expressed in other uh, way also that is x on y. So, the relationship will change that expectation of x given y is equals to some constant plus uh, the beta multiplied by that your y plus uh, epsilon. So, that is the observational error. So, now we have to estimate the parameters of this alpha and beta of the regression line such that it provides the best fit of the data. Now, this best fit of the da data means uh, if I just uh, see this one this scattered diagram. So, there could be the various possible uh, uh, lines that I can uh, that I can think through this uh, through this uh, um, points. Now, the which line should be the best fit line. So, what is uh, what is meant here is is this. So, if this is these are the data points then there could be the there could be some lines which can be uh, described through different uh, 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 straight lines. Now, out of these lines the possible li lines which one should be the best fit. Now, this to get that best fit. Uh, so, to get that best fit we have to follow some uh, methodology which is known as the method of least square to estimate that uh, to get that the line that is best fitting through these points and based on that we will get what is the uh, um, uh, um, that estimate of those regression constants. So, this is what is mentioned here that is uh, such that is provide the best fit of the data. That is if we have n pair of this ob ob observation x i y i. So, these are the paired observation and these are one pair is one point on that diagram. Then uh, determine y cap in such that the difference between that y i and y i cap is minimum. Now, what is this y i and y i cap is uh, if I refer to this diagram is this. Um, is this. So, this is your that point where you can see that this is your some uh, this is that y i and if the whatever suppose that this black line is your the best fit li uh, li uh, line then this with respect to this x with respect to this x i. So, the estimate is this one. So, this is your y i cap. So, the difference between these two is your is your the error which should be minimized. So, now as close as this point to this observ observation and this is for all the power points then that line should be the best fit line. So, the difference between so that is why the difference between the this y i and y i cap uh, should be minimum to declare that uh, the line is best fitting through the data. So, it is now uh, explained here. So, the our so our objective here to find the best line that passes through the data points with the least error. So, now these uh, blue stars are the observed data and this is the estimate of this regression li uh, line which is alpha plus beta x. Now, this difference from what is the point that you can see and what is this what is this corresponding uh, point on this regression line there is a red uh, line shown here is your error. So, this mod of this y i minus y i cap is, is, is the is the absolute error for the point x i y i. So, yeah, so y i is known is, is the observed one and that y i cap if I just put here this x i then alpha plus beta these two are the constant uh, putting this x i what we will get that will be your y i cap. So, the constants alpha and beta are found by the minimizing the sum of squared uh, sum of squared errors and this is known as this principle of a least square. So, what is done is that this is the error that is y i minus y i cap this is the error and that error is squared and summed up for all the observations. So, in this diagram if you see so, this is the a error y i minus y i cap and this is obtained for all these data points and these errors for individual point 
is first square of and uh, that uh, uh, so that square error is summed up for all the uh, n ob ob observations uh, that is av available. So, this is, is giving is the sum of square errors. Uh, now, this sum of square error, now if I just replace this y cap from that regression line which is your that alpha plus uh, uh, beta x i and we are taking this minus. So, y i minus alpha minus beta x i whole square is give you that sum of square er errors. Now, to uh, get that um, estimate of this alpha and beta, so this error should be uh, should be uh, for this alpha and beta, the value of alpha and beta should be such that, because these are the two constant which is basically which is determine everything about that straight line. So, this factor should be such that this error, this quantity should be minimum. Now, to ensure that uh, we have to take this uh, partial derivative of the sum of square error with respect to each this uh, parameters alpha and beta and this has to be equated to 0. So, we are having two uh, unknowns and we are having two uh, simultaneous uh, linear equation that we can solve to get what is the estimate of this beta. Before I proceed, I need to take some time to explain this one why we have taken this uh, square and uh, this uh, um, uh, and we, we are using this as that total a error. So, uh, because you can see the first thing, the first uh, direct uh, thing that you can uh, that you can have from this diagram is that. So, for some points the error will be negative and some point the error will be uh, error will be positive depending on whether the point is below the regression line or above the regression line. Now, when we are taking this square obviously those sign is going because we are interested to this what is the deviation from this regression line whether it is on the positive side or on the negative side that we are not interested when we are looking for the base fit line. So, to uh, so whatever the error that we, we get if we take the square obviously that sign will go. But this can also be also be uh, think of that if we just take that uh, absolute value of that error as it is shown it here, then also that sign can go. And if we just add them off, then what we will get is that uh, that also it will give and the absolute uh, error, the summation of the absolute error. But generally when we go for this least square technique, we take it to be the square and then we do this partial derivative. This is because you know when we, uh, we take the error. Now, if we just uh, see that error and that error if we take it as a as a linear uh, function basically what we are we, if we are minimizing it then this one basically our point is uh, sub, suppose that this is our target point. Now, this is the over that in the possible range of the parameters. Now, when we take this take this absolute error, then the change with respect to that uh, par parameter it will be the linear one. And when we take it to this uh, to the square or the so this will become basically a quadratic fu a quadratic fu uh, function. Now, what will happen if the our if our estimates are far away from the uh, far away from the what is the optimum value, then you know from the optimization te technique. So, if it is far away, then the next step basically it will go very close to that uh, uh, clo uh, to that optimum uh, value and once it is comes to the optimum value, then the steps will be uh, smaller steps. But in this case, gen generally that uh, the step size are always same because this variation is linear. Uh, uh, here, but uh, means this is basically when you go for this optimization, optimizing the par par parameters. That time it has been seen that this taking square is better uh, than this taking this this linear fu uh, function. Uh, so that is why for uh, so far as that uh, sum of uh, it is we we are all we are generally interested for the sum of uh, square errors. So what is done in this uh, principle of uh, least square technique? Well, so we got this uh, after through this partial derivative, we get uh, uh, these two simultaneous linear equation where uh, 
uh, by solving them we can get the estimates like this that alpha cap this is now this cap symbol is given when we are referring to that it is the it is estimate. So, this alpha cap if we, we can solve it and we can show that it will be the y bar minus beta cap x bar this y bar and x bar are the mean of this observed data and this beta cap is the estimate of this beta is uh, can be shown that it is the summation of this x i minus x bar multiplied by y i minus y bar multiplication of them sum it over over the all n observation divided by x i minus x bar square uh, sum it over uh, this uh, over this all n observation. So, these two are the estimate of this alpha and beta. So, the least square regression line is the expected value of this y given that x is equals to alpha cap plus beta cap x. Similarly, we may also obtain the least square regression of this x on y as I was mentioning that is that expected value of this x given y using the same uh, procedure, but here it will come as the, dep uh, the dependent variable will be y. Obviously, that alpha and this beta the estimate of this regression parameters obviously will change through that uh, if, if we follow that procedure whatever we have done. So, uh, now the conditional uh, variance that is now the conditional variance of this uh, now the variance of y given x. So, whatever we have got uh, that just now is that expected value of y given x. So, now we are interested to know what is the conditional variance of y given that x. So, the uh, um, variance about the regression line. Uh, basically, uh, um, what we meant here is that if I just refer to this diagram that this is the if this is the uh, this is y. So, we can see that it is varying from this 0 to 1. So, whatever the y uh, observed data that you have uh, that we got and we, we know how to uh, obtain that it is uh, sample estimate of this variance if we do. So, that will that will give you the variance of the y. Now, after we get this regression line now what is the variability of the y with respect to the regression line. So, basically we are looking through this axis and we see that how it is varying across this line across this regression line. So, that is what is referred to as means pictorially as this variance of y given x. Now, if we want to uh, estimate that one, if we want to calculate that one, this can be calculated as follows. Uh, here, the conditional variance is assumed to be constant within the range of this x. So, we have this s square y given x is equals to 1 by n minus 2 i equals to 1 to n y i minus y i cap whole square. So, this is the basically the estimate from this from this regression and uh, there are uh, this n minus 2 is to make it that what is called uh, uh, that uh, unbiased and this you know that uh, in the standard deviation we have seen that 1 degree uh, of freedom is lost and that is why we make it that n minus 1 that we discussed in this earlier lectures. And here one more uh, one more uh, degrees of freedom is lost when we are estimating that uh, estimating that regression line. Basically there are uh, if you see that there are two parameters that both alpha and beta has to be estimated through this regression li uh, line and that is why the two degrees of freedom is lost. So, make this estimate unbiased it is one uh, it is one by n minus two that we have to make. So, we can just do this uh, we can uh, sometimes uh, for this uh, we can make that y i minus y bar that is a mean of y whole square minus beta cap square uh, i to 1 to n x i minus x bar square. So, this is just uh, from this uh, equation and you can see that this is basically that error. And so, sum of square errors so which is the delta square by n minus 2 that is that uh, conditional variance of y given x. Now, taking into account the general trend with x the physical effect of this linear regression. So, what actually is happening through this linear regression is that uh, that uh, that y on x that is the regression y on x can be measured by a reduction of the original variance of this y. So, the original variance of this y you know that which is that uh, s y square which I can get the data of this y and we can estimate what is that uh, uh, what is this uh, variance from the sample and that but 
through this regression when we do it that there is a uh, there, there is a reduction in that uh, variance. So, which can be expressed through this 1 mi minus that uh, that uh, variance of this y given x divided by variance of this uh, variance of y sorry this square will be that s power square. So, um, so wh wh what you can see is that this is the original variance that was there in the data y and this is the variance after the regression that we, that, that we got. So, this is basically how much is the reduction then the reduction is that what is the total minus what we uh, what we got after this reg regression divided by what was there the total. So, this is that uh, this is a this is a reduction in that in that variance and later on we will just uh, uh, show you that this can be approximated to basically the correlation coefficient obviously the square root of the, this one is can be approximately uh, uh, equal to the correlation co uh, coefficient and that is basically the measure of how strong the relationship that we have measured where this s y square means this one uh, this is the one by that we have that we know is the sample estimate of this uh, variance of the data y. So, 1 by n minus 1 summation of from 1 to n y i minus y i um, uh, sorry y bar square. We will take one problem whatever we have discussed through the for this linear reg reg uh, regression. So, given the data where the shear strength in kilo Pascal obtained from the sample taken from 10 different depth of this clay stratum. Assume that the variance is constant with the depth and determine the mean and variance of the shear strength as a linear function of the depth. So, here you can see that there are uh, depths are given the depth at 2, 3, there are again uh, this 3. So, there are uh, 10 such uh, depths are taken, there are some depths are same you can see here and we are getting this uh, data. So, uh, for, for the strength that in, in kilo Pascal. So, uh, so we are having this 10 different uh, um, data set this is the uh, depth and this is basically uh, this depth is going 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9 and these are the corresponding uh, strength. So, this 10 data set that we are having and we will follow whatever the uh, whatever we have discussed just to find out the relationship between strength and the uh, depth. So, we will regress the strength on depth. So, our we can say that our variable y is here the strength and this x is here uh, depth. So, uh, to get this estimate through this least square technique we first get the uh, estimate of this para, um, parameter that is x y x square y square are determined and this will be will show in this table and then the summation of this x summation of y summation of x y summation of x square and y square and then the alpha beta are uh, obtained for using the um, formula that you obtained through that um, from that least square estimate. So, this is the uh, data for this different depth and uh, for this 10 uh, data sets are they there x y they are x y x y x i square y square and then uh, these things we will just see. So, first we are having up to this and we are having their summation also. So, uh, up to this of this table we know and using this in information that is what is the our x bar is 5.4, y bar is 4.2 uh, sorry it is 42, uh, this will be 42, 44 to 0 by 10. So, it is 42. So, this beta 1 you know that this expression we will use. So, um, and we will get that estimate of this 8.73 and alpha cap is the estimate of the minus 5.143 and this s y square there is a variance the or the total variance I can say now the total variance of this y is 466.667. Now, uh, so uh, this uh, now s y given that x is your this 44.88 and the standard deviation is 6.69 and this uh, r square is equals to 1 minus uh, that how much is the reduction is that 0.9039 and this alpha and beta that you can see it here. So, alpha is minus 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.143 and beta is this one. So, this regression equation comes like this that expected value of this y given x is that minus 0 0.5, 0 0.143 plus 8.730 x. Now, using these things basically uh, this relationship in the table we got this uh, uh, this expression first. So, we are putting this x input and that alpha estimate and beta estimate and we get this one. And from here we are getting what is their error. 
uh, of this that is y minus y cap. So, this minus uh, this and that square will give you that basically what is this uh, this one that we get that error square. And then if we sum it up this is basically the sum of square error and we are using that information to estimate this what is that reduction in this uh, in this uh, uh, that variability variance in y. So, um, uh, this one we have seen. So, this is the finally that uh, expected mean is expressed through this expression and expected uh, variance is 6.697 and obviously, this is constant over the entire range of x. So, now we will deal with the regression with the non constant variance. Now, when the conditional variance about the regression line is a function of independent variable, it may be expressed as variance of y given x is equals to sigma square multiplied by g square x. Now, this g x basically is the predetermined function, some, uh, some function is that how it is varying and this should be multiplied with the sigma square and when it is variance you know that any function or constant that is multiplied with this, uh, with this variance. So, that we make it square uh, that this we discussed in the earlier lectures. So, this is that sigma square g square x. So, now this uh, sigma is an unknown constant and here the assumption is that data points in the region of this small variance have more weight and then those in the region of this large variance. So, we assign the weight uh, w i inversely proportional to the variance. So, so the some weight we have to put and the our assumption is that when the data is having the small variance. Now, if you see this uh, diagram basically. So, if I see that, uh, so this is varying means suppose that this what we can see in this literally. So, we can easily see that as it is going, uh, as, so if this is the x as this uh, x is varying basically the range is changing. So, here the weight will be more in this zone where the variance is less and here the weight will be less where the variance is more. Uh, basically that is what. So, in this way, so it is inversely proportion, uh, proportional to the variance. So, this is how the weights are given. So, 1 by variance of uh, y given x i which is the 1 by sigma square g square x i. The square error is calculated as this sigma square is equals to that this weight is o, o weights we will put and then that your that difference square and sum it up. So, uh, this, this is the i equals to 1 to n. So, now this y i cap again that estimate we will get from this alpha minus beta x i. Uh, now, to find that uh, least square estimate of alpha and beta the, and the total error is minim minimized and thus uh, we obtain this alpha and beta and the following the same principle that we have discussed for this constant variance we will just get that error and error is uh, partial uh, derivative is taken equated to 0. And after solving those equation, we will get the estimate of alpha is equals to uh, through this expression uh, the w i into y i minus beta cap of this uh, w i x i divided by uh, w i summation of all this w i. And beta uh, cap will be obtained through this, uh, this expression, even though this expression looks uh, uh, through uh, like a little bit uh, cumbersome, but thing is that this is we get following the same principle that you have uh, done for this constant uh, uh, variance. Only thing here the one that weight is function is coming and which the weight you can see that this weight is equals to sigma square w i prime and this sigma square if you just multiply whatever the equation that we have used here. So, this sigma square will be cancelled. So, it will be 1 by g uh, g x square. So, now this g x square generally some function we, we, we used and that uh, function of this x uh, should be there to when we are determining this, uh, this w i to get the estimate of this alpha and beta. And the conditional variance is calculated as s i square is a square g x square and s, s x i this is a standard deviation is a square root of this positive square root of this. So, s multiplied by the g x. So, you can see here that this conditional uh, standard de deviation is a function of that x where this s here is that is this uh, that summation of i equals to 1, uh, 1 to n w i into y i minus alpha cap minus beta cap x i whole square divided by n minus 2. We will take one example on this one it will be more clear in that uh, way where the variance is dependent on the 
value of x. Uh, the maximum settlement and the maximum differential settlement of, of 10 storage tanks, this A is wrong, of 10 storage tanks is as shown in the ta uh, table. The differential settlement appears to increase with the maximum settlement. Assume that the conditional standard deviation of the differential settlement y increases linearly with the maximum settlement x or this is what is told that is a, a linearly it, it uh, increases that means that g x that the function that we have told this is g x is equals to x. So, the variance of y given x is equals to sigma square x square uh, that, that function square. Obtain the regression equation for estimating the expected maximum differential settlement y on the basis of the information for the maximum settlement of x maximum settlement x of that tank. To do the, this one, this is the data, the 10 different uh, data set is given here. So, uh, this is the maximum settlement, this is the maximum differential settlement. So, here we have to regress that uh, maximum differential settlement on this maximum settlement. So, our variable here in this uh, following the notation that we have used is that this is um, our y and this is our x. So, and the conditional standard de deviation of the differential settlement y increases linearly with the maximum settlement x or uh, variance y on condition x is equals to sigma square x square. So, this is a this is the relationship that to we uh, that is given. So, this x this function actually is predetermined as we have uh, seen in that theory. So, here the w i is the inverse of that function. So, 1 by x i square. So, this is the weight is that is the w i and with that w i. So, for all this uh, we will get this weight and um, basically so this is input this is also we know the ob observed data this is the weight which is the inverse to this x i and so these things we can uh, calculate w i x i w i y i w i x i y i and w i x i square. So, if we use this one and, and then uh, so up to this of this table we can calculate and based on this we will estimate that alpha and beta and here the beta is estimate of this beta is 0 0.688 and estimate of this alpha is uh, 0 0.229 and the s square is your <coughs> 0.140 and this um, standard deviation of y given x equals to 0. 374x. So, you can see that as x in increases, this uh, standard deviation also increases, which is a function of this x uh, of the uh, variable x. Now, the expected value of this y uh, is that the regression equation for the estimating the expected maximum differential settlement y on the basis of information for the maximum settlement x of the tank is as expected value of this y given x is equals to 0.229 plus 0.2. 688x. So, this is that uh, uh, expected value of y given x and this is the expected value of uh, this is the uh, standard deviation of y given x. And now, using this relationship basically when how we are getting this point 3455 here that we have seen that a, a square is the, this one. Basically, we are using this alpha and beta estimate to calculate this one first and this total we, we, are, we are getting. Okay, this is a sum of square error, weighted, weighted sum of square error and from there we are getting this a, a square and from there it we are getting that uh, given that uh, that um, variance uh, sorry standard deviation of y given x 0.374 x. Okay, so, next we will take that multiple linear regression and here you know that uh, so far whatever we have discussed it is that. Um, uh, regression and one uh, dependent variable, one uh, response variable, one target variable was there. Now, in case when we are having that more than uh, one uh, random variable, then we have to go for this uh, more than one uh, dependent variable, then we have to go to this multiple linear regression. So, this multiple linear regression attempts to model the relationship between two or more explanatory variables and a response variable by fitting a linear equation to the observed data. Every value of independent variable is associated with a value of the 
dependent variable y. It is also a type of uh, linear regression where the mean and variance of the dependent variable will be a, a function of uh, values of this several variables. So, here instead of that using that one uh, independent variable that is the x uh, that we are used that x and our uh, our dependent variable was a y earlier uh, earlier case. So, here what you can see is that that y be the uh, function of m variables instead of only one so far what we, have, what we have discussed here it is the y is the function of m variables which is x 1 x 2 up to x m. Then the assumptions underlying the multiple regression are the expected value of y is a linear function of uh, x 1 x 2 up to x m that is the expected value of y given the information of this uh, independent variable x 1 x 2 up to x m is equals to that beta naught beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus up to in this way beta m x m. One thing I will just one, one correction I will just do before I proceed f f further in this, uh, in this um, uh, linear re regression with one uh, with between x and y. So, where only one input was mm, there I might have sometime mentioned that this x is your uh, in this expression, uh, in this expression when we are regressing y on x, I might have sometime mentioned that this x is your uh, x is your dependent variable and y is the um, target variable. No, so the correction will be that x is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. Sometimes for the y we can uh, mention that this is that target variable, response variable, dependent variable, dependent variable and all. And basically when we are referring to this o x, this is the independent variable. So, earlier in this case uh, when we are discussing the simple regression that time only one dependent variable was there. Now, what we are discussing here is that we are having more than one, uh, more than one dependent uh, more than one independent variable to model that uh, uh, dependent variable y and this is through a linear uh, function which is that uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus up to this up to the beta m x m. Now, basically how the concept is uh, concept is taken through is that now for that when you see that there is only one uh, independent variable and one dependent variable between x and y, we are basically fitting a straight line through the observed data point. Now, when we are having more than one in, in input, say for example, if I just say there are two inputs x 1 and x 2 and our target our dependent variable is y, then basically you can you can uh, visualize you can conceptualize in this way that this is a three dimensional space over which the two uh, axis is one for the x 1 other for the x 2 and we are basically fitting one. Uh, surface one straight one linear su surface through the data point in the three dimensional space. So, this is in case of when there are two independent variable and one dependent variable uh, y. Now, sim similarly you can extend it to the higher, higher dimension and uh, this uh, so that for the m uh, independent variable the relationship is generally that b naught plus b 1 x 1 plus b uh, up to the b m a x m. Now, we will follow the similar procedure to estimate uh, this, uh, these parameters as well that is we have to first find out what is the error and that error should be squared up sum them. So, there is the sum of square error then it is minimized with respect to the parameters to get those uh, expression. So, where this beta naught, beta 1, beta m are the regression constant to be determined from the observed data and uh, the conditional variance of y for the given x 1, x 2 up to x m is a constant that is uh, various uh, variance of this y given this input is equals to sigma square or this is in case of when it is constant or it may be dependent on some function of this x 1, x 2, x m. So, when it is when it is uh, when it is varying when it is non constant as we have used in the simple regression case. So, this variance of y given x 1, x 2, x m is equals to sigma square multiplied by the square of some function of this x 1, x 2 up to x m. 
Now, that uh, expression that is a regression analysis uh, determines the estimates for this beta naught, beta 1, beta m and the sigma square sorry this will be square the and the sigma square based on the given data x 1 i, x 2 i, x 3 i up to x m i and i is varying from the 1 to n. So, uh, we are having then n set of uh, I can say that n set of data that is uh, y 1, x 1, x 2, x 3, x m. Similarly, I, I will have the another set of uh, this, uh, this data. So, there are the m is the number for the m is the number for um, the um, uh, number of the dependent variable and the n is the number of what how many set of the observed data that is available to us. So, based on this uh, we, we can so whatever the expression that we have seen uh, in this, this expression, this expression can be uh, slightly modified as this one uh, that this is the alpha plus beta 1 x 1 minus x 1 bar plus up to this that beta m x m minus x m bar. So, how we get this one is that that this x 1 bar is your uh, is the mean of whatever we have seen in this in the uh, variable of x 1 and the x m bar is the mean of that uh, observed da data of uh, for the uh, independent variable x m. So, basically what we are replacing that uh, this uh, constant beta naught is basically a adjusted is basically re replaced. So, this alpha you can see that this alpha is equals to that beta naught plus uh, beta 1 uh, x 1 bar plus beta 2 x 2 bar plus up to this beta m x m bar. So, uh, here so what we can uh, get is that from this uh, this expression we can estimate that alpha beta 1 beta 2 beta m and from that estimate of this alpha and obviously beta 1 beta 2 are the same if we put it here we will get what is the estimate for this beta naught. And uh, the, uh, this one we will see we will continue from this point onwards in our next lecture. And so, uh, what is in this linear uh, regression part? What we have seen in today's lecture is the linear regression and linear regression with respect to the constant variance and uh, some uh, or the non-constant variance. We have seen uh, one example for each each case. And this so uh, from in the next class, what we will see is that uh, multiple uh, linear regression. And then we will also see the nonlinear regression, and we will see the uh, correlation as a uh, measure of how strong the relationship is is uh, is captured that we will see in the next class thank you